Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, it's Reggae and I am very excited. Oh, I haven't really done a kind of mood status update in a long time. Well, there's reason to do it this time. Update 9.7 is out and I was briefly assured a while ago that there may be some things in this update that I am quite partial to. And lo and behold, recommended filter unlocked. Tap the switch displayed at the Legend Special Stages to show the uncleared stages that fit your current level. Ladies and gentlemen, it is essentially the feature I suggested where you say to the game, I only want to see these things, I don't want to see that stuff, and you get rid of it and the menu is felt simple and lovely. My idea is that you could implement a little icon system that would allow you to visually remove stages that you don't want on the menu. So that you could click a minus icon of a stage, for example, that you've completed but isn't a farming stage, stage to get a unit you've already got, for example, that you will never need to go back to. You could press the minus button on that and it would disappear from the menu. And once you got rid of all the ones you wanted to, you just have the stages you want to play right there for you so you don't have to scroll and look about for which one you want to enter. That's just nicer than anything I could think of. A little sort of wooden button built into the wooden menu facility. That is brilliant. Less clunky than the kind of yellow section I was suggesting as being a button next to it. That is such a good idea. Right, let's turn it on. Not quite what I was expecting. It isn't kind of a straight off clear thing. It would be nice for the level of customization to be able to get rid of, say, Strait of Wings, Island of Ash, Cabin of Comets, because I've never taken too amazedly to these stages. I'm also not glad of Lucky Ticket G's evading the grasp of the filter. That is something I definitely customise way down the drain. But anyway, farming stages, I guess it makes sense to have them and I'm gonna be happy with what I've got here, right? Beautiful design and just makes the menu so much more sensible. That is utterly wonderful. Very enamoured with that. Thank you, Ponos. The menu improvements don't stop though because there are additional slots there's a little lovely plus button with a very similar colour scheme to the back. Very simple drop shadow to it, so it's still very visible. I'm liking the aesthetics of that. So it says, pay 90 cat food to unlock slot number 11. You must first collect 25 meow medals. I love this. What was I saying when meow medals came out? I can't remember, but something along the lines of who cares. Now, I care. They have been given significance because they allow you to unlock something else in the game and that is what this stuff should be doing. If everything is connected and interdependent, everything gains more significance and becomes more relevant. Suddenly, I actually care about having Meow Medals. I might try and find out what that weird thing with monies from enemies or whatever it was thing was that isn't at all clear how you get it, right? Because now it matters that I get the Meow Medals. 90 cat food is a lot, but I'm doing it. I love me some slots. Oh, it's an exciting day. Right, slot number 12 is another 90 cat food. Now I need 50 Meow Medals. I'll use another 90 cat food. We've got slot 12, ladies and gentlemen. Ho, 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 ho. Okay, I failed miserably. I've only got 12 slots. I'll have to populate them with some things. I don't know what I'll populate them with because I was kind of happy with my 10 slots. Of course, I'm happy to have more, but what I'm going to fill them with, I don't know. I've got all the XP stages, all the metal stages, general slot, material farming slot, growing strange slot, which is getting a bit dusty and unused, four star slot, cats of the cosmos slot, Slot 8 to 10 are the kind of other ones, but I guess if I ever get my 15 slots, I can have slot 1 to 10 as specific stuff, and then a whole 5 slots for random pursuits of levels. That is fantastic. So now I am tempted to have a gander at Meow Medal, something I haven't done since they came out, basically. Oh, okay, this has fallen into place quite nicely. I've got 59 Meow Medals, and getting 60th will unlock me something very new. Oh, I like how shiny they are. They're like ultra rare trading cards. What's this one then? Oh, Blue Impact, we're not gonna get that done anytime soon. What about here? Don't know what that is. Uh, right, okay, no. 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 
Recruit a top class Yamato to help her. May I assist you? So assistant, right? I've got assistants. Maybe I need a new one. Clear all into the future chapter on zombie outbreak stages. I mean, I definitely should have done that by now. Unfortunately, it looks like I'm really far away from getting all these outbreaks done. We might have to look elsewhere for where we get the uh, Meow Medal then. And I feel like Gamma Toto is really going to be the only way that I can get this to work. I've got some Catamins, so why not? Let's see if we can get ourselves a top class helper. Right, well, the final one-hour expedition to bring us down to 20 of each catamin. What's it going to bring me? I'm going to think a chunky nothing. I'm flipping right. I guess it's time to learn how to do one percenter. I've invested enough time in this. We're going to get slot 13, even if it kills me. That was actually really interesting. But I mean, as Lucas says, utterly pointless at the time of creation. But now we finally have relevance to it. And I finally understand why it never worked for me, because the wording is just literally completely the wrong way around. What I'm going to do is put on Lucas's infinite option on the Big Bang, or try to. So what I've formed here is roughly the same as he's told us to use, with Nyladin for extra waves and extra meme value, and of course, Eggy Cat. I also put in green shell. It's just a little bit of extra protection. There's nothing but to give it a go with my 301 speed ups. Thank goodness that I am finally actually using one of them. The first thing I've got to do is kill Cat God, but not too well, basically, is, is the brief. I reckon two Manic Jamiras is probably fine. Then we'll just stack up on the not very damaging but nicely protecting Sadako because we don't need the anti-wave value of Octopus, we just need the anti-floating. I don't know if I need it down to an insanely fine art. I hope not because we uh, we know how I do with the T word. No more units, no more units. Cat God, I can't be letting you die yet basically. Excellent, right, we just got Sadakos. Ah, it's Le Salar. Ah, oh, Scrum Pits. Okay, uh, speed up CPU, I guess. No, no, don't do that. It will do kill a cat. No, we need to make sure this stuff's dealt with first. Cat God isn't dead. I've failed in my mission already. Of course, me trying to do it is just going to overcomplicate it. Yes, okay, wave value. We love that. I guess it's just CPU time, right? <sighs> I believe in you, CPU. I hope you believe in me. Oh, crikey. Okay, so I feel like I'm managing to just not get this right. And I thought this would be simple enough. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, dear. This is just genuinely very sad. I thought I brought enough units to help me, but... Oh, yes, I have. Yes, I have. Cat God is dead. Thank goodness. Thanks, Lucas. Tutorial so simple. Even Raggett can do it. Okay, so this has now been going for several hours now, and I hope that it's been enough to get at least one of those strange Meow medals that previously served no purpose at all. So I remember that to successfully get it done, I need to just let myself lose, because I can't win, and it needs to be one of those two, otherwise the results won't be counted. But you may still be charged. Eggy Cat Spam, I reckon, will be the way to do it. Eggy Cats will be the only line of defence eventually, and then we will lose. Two killer cats in a row, that is immensely satisfying. And here we go, the last Manic Jamira is about to be gone. There we go. Try and get a killer cat in. Can I get another killer cat in? Yes, another killer cat was got. Yeah, it looks like we've done it. And here we go, there it is indeed. Earn, yeah right, a total of large number of cents. Only that one. I mean, wow, I'd have to let these levels go on for a while. But then again, it's a while until we probably get the male medals needed for the next slot anyway. So I think I'll be contented with my 13th slot that I've now unlocked. 
pay 90 cat food, you must first collect 60 Meow medals. I have done both. As of this moment, we have slot 13 unlocked. And the 14th out of 15 slots requires 70. I thought it might have gone up by 5, but no, it's proper hardcore there. We may never actually get the 14th slot, but I'm very happy with 13 of them. Slot 8 is now officially repurposed into my next deliberate slot, a zombie outbreak slot. So I've still got a lot of them left to go. Yep. That'll do. Pretty smooth. My personal preference for an anti-zombie slot is no expensive units. I find them all getting just completely usurped and burrowed under and confused and ultimately killed by the zombies. So, less risk, right? My own expensive one's going to be a Bahama, which is more for kind of getting out of those sticky situations. The rest of the stuff, pretty disposable, pretty reproducible. That's what I need with my level of aptitude to zombies. Bit more of an acid test this one into the future three excellent weed whacker work there freezed it twice and then just get rid of it completely ah non-zombie enemies well i guess bahamut would be sensible for that nice that's worked quite well and max worker can oh crikey okay how long's this stack gonna stack up against the boar for kind of semi respectively especially against this zombie mini cyclone just love leg stacking i mean look at that nothing vaguely anti-red in here and still probably classic bad review makers curse their balls like really weak or something but i'm happy with how legs the well are doing well is so ingrained in its identity so good in that way that its name changes to well adverb legs saying that though i am about to lose so ignore that. Yeah, getting all a bit hairy and scary here. Just as we run out of money, get some long distance in from Housewife and just make sure the meat shielding's kept up. Damage from Maglev, possibly? Yes, possibly. Oh, nice. Good stuff. Now we move on to the non-menu improvement feature of version 9.7. Power up your heroes with talent orbs. Open the talent window at the upgrade menu to equip talent orbs to certain characters' true forms. Oda Nobunaga? Yes, I like. I'd say that Row Cat and Bathtub and Swimmer, pretty good already, as is Can Can, but I'd love to use Bodders out for Cat again, that'd be great. Rodeo Cat, otherwise known as Cat Gunslinger. Aha! Talent orb slot. Talent Orb in storage will be equipped. Now that is exciting. You know my opinion on talents is that we should buff the units whose true form hasn't got them to a competitive state yet to make the bad ones better. So I have a level playing field of cats that could be useful, like we did with Chill Cat with its talents. You get talent orbs from certain Enigma stages. What's the luck? I never got round to doing these four Enigma stages here. Maybe that will help me towards what I want. So, I guess there's nothing for it except to try these Enigma stages and see if we can get any of these orbs. Four cat tickets and nothing else. All Mr. Moles and that in this level. It's actually been really rather horrible. Hopefully I'll be rewarded at the end of it. Face gone. What are we going to get? Nothing. A new one to me for this stage. We are done. Anything from this one? No. What have we got? Nothing. What a waste of time. So, in hope of getting some more Enigma stages to try and get this talent orb, I've been at Torture Room. And lo and behold, recently, I found myself very close to 1,000 total clears on it. And I thought I would share this milestone with you all. Shy boy to the edge of window, these two units wait patiently for cat can can can. That one, Maglev. And that is a thousandth victory. Look at that. First time I've hit four digits in a stage. And still, only one extra Enigma stage from when you last saw me. 18 torture rooms later and I am still no higher in Enigma stage numbers. Let's go through these final few energies. Hopefully we can get at least one more. That was pretty fast. You're doubtless going to tell me it wasn't, though. Oh, that's on nearly my last energy. We've got another Enigma stage. Hooray. 
Okay, so here are the two Enigma stages complete and ready to see if we're going to get any talent orbs at all. No, Merciless is not going to tell me what's in it either. It's only 100 energy. We can, uh, we can work through this. Looks like a zombie stage. This could be way overboard, but I've got a zombie slot now, haven't I? What have we got? Oh, okay. We were right to zombify it. Let's see what this outbreak-driven slot can do. Crikey, that Zor got there quite quickly. I'm kind of like getting rid of the, the meat shield, because Mana Island is tanky within itself, and it's mostly about proccing these zombies anyway. So I'm fairly happy how it's looking at the moment. All the Thorn Surges die, things might change. But at the moment, stuff is pretty weak, and it's getting killed off. Oh, yes. I feel like the outbreak slot has proved itself rather well. The cherry on the cake, of course, would be to end out this stage with a talent orb. Will it be forthcoming? Oh, yes! It's all falling into place now. Talent orb. Defense up B. Zombie times one. Not sure immediately what that means. Sounds a bit sort of code-ish, but I'm sure we'll be able to work it out. Now, I was thinking about this talent orb and what I might use it on, and I thought, well, the little bandit Gomon cat is nice and fast, isn't it? But not especially useful. It would be nice to be able to use it again. I'd love to put it on Oda, but I don't do so well with Ubers and zombies and the expensive ones anyway. If I tap to equip, oh, it's going to tell me more, is it? Talent orbs are items that unlock new abilities when equipped to a cat unit. Well, I like the sort of moody red background. Merging orbs of the same type and grade will power them up into a single orb of a higher grade. NP can be used to unequip. We can reverse our mistake if need be, which is great, right? Because I'm not sure if what I'll be doing is a great idea. We've got plenty of MP. Let's use that, which takes us here, and we choose that. Put it on Gomon Cat. Damage reduction for zombies. And it costs only 10 MP to unequip. And oh, look, it's got Zombie Killer as well. Okay, I'm going to splash out 50 MP. I'm going to do it. It's got Zombie Killer now. So my Gomon Cat is going to be a member of my crack team of anti-zombies. I'm going to put it in place of Ectowate because Weedbacker does a great job. And if Ectowate does a great job as well, they're then contradicting each other. So I have myself something pretty fancy, I reckon, to the outbreaks. Okay, you go, Gomon Cat. I haven't used you in a long time. Oh, you attack fast, don't you? You don't move that fast. Well, I might equip your move up speed talents. Although, what with zombies being around everywhere, it probably doesn't matter how fast you go. Nice. Yeah, I mean, it's impossible to work out who the zombie kills are from. But at the moment, I'm happy with my Gomon cat. I will further talent it if we struggle in the Chapter 3 outbreak. Of course, we forget about Gomon, but it is all about those monies at the start. Oh, and there's a zombie kill from it. Plain as day. Which is probably really important with zombies, right? They don't exactly give you many monies. I can really get behind Gomon as a meat shield. A nice, pretty decently anti-zombie, fast, money-generating meat shield. What, what are they even called? The Zozai's? I doubt it. But let's see if Gomon can doubt their existence. Yes! I was so sure the answer was going to be no. Ah, what do we got? Crikey, okay. I guess we'll see how it stacks up as a non-zombie meat shield too. Make sure we have the legs and the thaumaturges and of course Manic Island. We've had the one knockback. I think sticking to these units that I know are going to help me does help. And there we go. Success. Legs and a Manic Island. All the service to other enemies that you could possibly need. Talent orbs bring valuable context to Enigma stages, which at the moment are kind of pointless themselves. It's nice to get them out of stages, sure, but what significance do they actually bring? Well now, talent orbs. We have a reason to go for them. I still think it would have been quite nice to have a kind of lower grade Enigma stage that you can get while hunting treasure when you're in the Empire of Cats and into the future chapters, because that gives you even more of a reason to farm treasure, because it's something you need to do and Sometimes it's difficult to encourage people to do it, and I think that would have been a great way to do it, getting these little less difficult versions of the Enigma stages that gave more kind of beginner game rewards in the low end of the stages that people could unlock. But I'm glad, however it was done, that significance has been brought to the Enigma stages. In addition, there also seem to have been stages added that let you farm 
Enigma rewards or some such. At least people said this was new. The Isle of the Lord of the Flies here. It's got three stages within it and I'm going to attempt all of them. So the first one is called Compass Mound. It's a deadly stage and it says inferior stage enigmas have a guaranteed chance to be discovered. So these are surefire ways of getting enigma stages whereas there are small reward charts within stories legend stages in a nice mirroring of the exact way that you have it with materials unfortunately i'm of the mind that material stages are almost completely useless the benefit you get from doing stories of legend at the same time and the drop rates that you can get quite easily from the stories of legend i think far outweigh the usefulness of those material stages but let's find out if these could be any better First of all, lovely map. I'm really liking the look of the map. You've got the compass idea in it. Looks all sort of piratey and archipelago adventure -y. Very exciting place to start. Now we've got Paladin. That'll be fine for Metal One Horn. But if there's any other metal stuff, we might struggle. Luckily, it looks like a mixed level. So in that respect, we should be fine. Come on, my son. Third time lucky? Third time lucky. What do we got inside the base? Okay, some more metals and principally Bun Bun. So let's get Eva Zero Zero out there. Try and slow all of them and then I'll try and get Cyberpunk down and all that stuff. If it has the range appropriately done, it will be able to sort us out some slowing across the board. Right, bit of slowing there. Thank you, Cyberpunk. Let's get Paladin out and hope that that can... Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Oh, critical hit though. And we'd knock the Shy Boy back briefly. And we knocked back the Bun Bun there. Is there still hope? I don't know. I think Peach Devils is the next logical conclusion. Get rid of that Shy Boy maybe, or at least shut it up for a little bit. Oh, I can't believe you did that. But I'm sure we'll be okay if there's no more metal stuff. I say that because Paladin's dead again. And now the Shy Boy is. Has this become manageable? Oh heck no! There's a there's a there's a Zor now, which is just gonna decimate Cyberpunk and everything else in a kind of very, very miserable way. Let's go for damage this time then. Mega Aphrodite is my first one this time. And then I'm gonna get the Peach Devils out at the same time. Possibly a little bit risky with the Metal One Horn, but Paladin will be next. And the Zor is already there. Seems earlier than before, so it's probably enemy limit and not timer. So I'd need to set it all up for stalling and complicated things that I don't have time to do, basically. Oh, go on, my son. Go on, Shadow Gal. Either zero, zero out. Meat shield for my life. Is the Zor weaker than I remember it being? Mind you, I've only seen an outbreak so far. It's gone! And steaming towards the base. Hurrah, looks like it's going to be a victory. And there we go. Guaranteed to get an inferior Enigma stage out of that. I'm liking this. Given how long it's taken to get Enigma stages from the Stories of Legend stages so far, this is showing more promise to me than Material stages did. That slot wasn't so well suited to that last level, so I guess logic would dictate, hopefully, this time it will be. And to allay your concerns that I'm... Far too stingy. I'm going to be putting on items immediately. Amazing architecture. Bit worried about the shape of that, but it's fine. we got a Junfish Sones in the background, which is kind of welcome because I haven't seen one of those in absolutely ages. I reckon our Peach Devils are going to be well suited to this. I like the kind of moody dark red of the background and the acropolis -y sort of stuff in the foreground. And the cobbled streets. I think it's a very nice colour palette. Very moody. Pulled off very well. Very nice. Zombies? Not so nice. Ah, good. Elizabeth the level. Well, that's fine because we've got an anti-wave unit. I mean, this is surely the true test of a general slot if it can get levels like this done. They're basically, I'd say in principle, kind of variations upon an Elder Secret, right? For all your different types of enemies, see if your general type slot can deal with all of them. Except without the horrible bit afterwards. And there we go. We've got an inferior stage from that. And finally, Church of Mercator. Merciless. Ah, so I have swapped in Ava 01 this time, which, discuss amongst yourselves, might be a better thing to do anyway, because then we've got the anti-zombie trait within that, and barrier breaker as well. I don't know, the general slot's fared us pretty well so far, hopefully it will continue to do so. Oh, little bun buns, glad I kept my anti-floating boy then. <gasps> It's the Starred Alien Toucan making a return. Bonjour to you, my chap. Lovely to see you. Glad I got the paladin.
in. There's quite a few metal hippos and we don't want them clogging up all this stuff. I didn't get rid of Momotaro. That might be good for Cathy's, although not good for what ever on earth is supposed to be happening right now because I'm telling you one thing and the one thing I'm telling you is that it's not going all that well. Maybe if I keep doing this I can destroy the barriers on demand but maybe have the metal hippo stall me a bit? That's definitely been the case. Max Money's let's try and build up some stuff that won't immediately kill it. That would be our aim. Oh, dead now. Okay, well, forward we push. Slow them all at once. Try and spread them out a little bit and fight them on an individual basis. God, that's Eva 0 0 dying so quickly. It's pretty nasty. And I thought about doing Eva 0 0 early, but I need it to come up behind my units and hopefully not die, although I feel like it will just die anyway. What else can I realistically do? I mean, maybe Cyberpunk needs to come in from the back as well. It's difficult, but I'm grateful. I'm grateful for this metal hippo here, keeping us stalled. But other than that, looking like a pretty remote possibility of getting anywhere with this. Let's reserve the use of the slow bean then. The further we can spend away from that horrible toucan thing, the better. And slow. I, mean, I feel like Cat Machine would be a definite help here. But let's get the Eva 0, Zero out. Hopefully it should be of the same kind of help. And hopefully it won't be dead this time. We can put the range to more use, certainly. We are doing better this time, but it's already been damaged, not back. Can we get another Eva 01? We can indeed. Two Eva 01s, in fact, which is great. I mean, the anti-alien power will be very welcome. But even so. Oh, even so. We don't need an Eva. We do need an Even so. There's another one. Flipping sake. I mean, Eva 0, zero from behind is so much of a better solution but now it's dead anyway and we're really nowhere near another one quite demoralizingly far away from another one okay it's not going to be pointless to have a cyberpunk out well it will be very soon but the range of the wave is not enough to kill the cyberpunk straight away so it's just a matter of if we can keep out the range or not because i'm sure another one of those gits is going to come out or not or not oh what's this is this a marvelous end has he done it Yeehaw! Look at that. Now if I click on the information, is it going to tell me anything more useful than it did before? Ah, here we go, yes. So in the second stage, normal stage enigmas have an unlikely chance to be discovered, which, you know, unlikely in Battle Cat's terms is just basically you've got no chance. Inferior stage enigmas have a guaranteed chance, as in all of them. And then the Church of Mercator, which we've just done, superior as an unlikely normal stage enigmas have an unlikely chance to be discovered and inferior guaranteed can it be treasure radar if the treasure radar mark appears next to the stage's listed reward treasure radar may be used for 100 percent chance to receive it so no right because it's not in drop rewards that or it hasn't been arranged particularly well let's take a treasure radar into this stage give it another go Oh, it's a barrier, so I can't slow it. Blast. Breaker blast is something I, I could have and, and should have. But there we go. Living life on the edge, I guess. Never was even that conscious of it, but Eva 01 has pretty good recharge time. I might be tempted to keep that in my general slot. Oh, that is a strong director Kurosawa. Well, I'm fairly happy with that. I might develop that strategy, see if I need to keep the sniper cat and the rich cat. I was very happy how replicable that was, and it shows just how advantageous it is to bring the Eva 0, zero out afterwards. No, it's just giving me my treasure radar back, which is a nice feature in the game. Been in it for a while. If you use a treasure radar mistakenly on something where it won't benefit you, it gives it back to you. And we got a normal stage that time. I'm fond of those stages. They are interesting. They are within the realms of being doable and for inferior Enigma stages, quite lucrative and quite useful. I mean, what have we got after four completions for Enigma stages? And one of them is a normal. We might be able to get another talent orb out of those four. And talent orbs certainly seem really interesting to be able to really mix and match up your talents in that kind of Pokemon-esque way. I'm going to come out and say that I love those stages that have just been introduced because we're seeing with it the welcome return to meritocracy in stages. A meritocracy is the idea that the harder you try and the more talented you are, the better rewards you get. What we've seen, I think, really unfortunately with things like Lucky Ticket G stages is a complete 
desecration of that meritocracy to a point where it's unclear whether you should be doing the lowest stage you can, one of the ones in middle, or the last stage. It is completely unclear because the amount of energy it costs to do each stage changes. And as it goes up, obviously you can do the stage fewer times in your full complement of energy. And so then you have to weigh up the drop rewards and work out which one is best to do. That was never the case with lucky ticket stages. Every stage is 100 energy. And so it is very clear that you should do the most difficult one you can because you get the best rewards out of it. And that is exactly the case with Isle of the Lord of the Flies stages. They are each 200 energy. And so you do the most difficult one you are able to do. And it gives you better rewards as a result of that. I think that's so much simpler. That's so much clearer. And that's just so much more rewarding. Material stages are desecrating meritocracy. The amount of energy to do each stage increases, throwing a spanner into the works. Which one of these do I do to get myself the best possible reward? It clouds the issue and makes the meritocracy completely unclear and perhaps not even there. And it doesn't feel at all special that you're doing the last stage. And that is what I think is brilliant about these Isle of God map fly lord stages that have just been introduced. They are the same energy cost. And so it is very clear that you are rewarded in the highest for doing the most difficult stage you can. And I think that makes the playing of such farming stages much more enjoyable and certainly unobjectively more simple. And finally, for the nicks and the knacks of the update, apart from the usual new legend maps and new user rank rewards, as well as an uber true form for Gladios, a unit I don't have, the immune to waves ability has been added to Cat Machine, Keji, Akira, and Togaluga. And I didn't quite understand what that meant. I thought these units had that thing already, right? So I asked people and they confirmed to me that this is the second form of each of these units getting that ability, which I certainly know for Cat Machine is really beneficial because apparently the second form was fairly useless until the true form made the unit really quite good indeed. And then it seems like Akira really stands to benefit from that. I do think a lack of clarity does sometimes cause an issue with these update notes and it's still the case and it's something I've complained about before. I know that within this video I made a mistake thinking that certain Enigma stages, you know, well just Enigma stages, would give me what I was looking for when actually they didn't have a chance to. Update notes saying certain Enigma stages? Not helpful. Really not useful and I still maintain that Within the game, not the App Store, but within the game where they have as much space to print this information as they need, update notes ought to be a lot more detailed. But saying that, these are insufficient update notes for what is a fantastic update. Time to wrap up. Update 9.7. Marvellous, really. Adding some of the most significant and fantastic features that I've seen in a while. This has happened a couple of times now that we've gone on to new numbers of updates that, to me, are almost completely meaningless. Meow medals, who cares? Now, we have a reason to care. And if Meow Medals were going to be some big thing that an update was introduced upon, they should have had that significance already. This update 9.7 is far more deserving of being that new number 9.0 update than 9.0 was. Do you agree with me? I've got no idea. I'm talking now. You're not watching me then. So I'd be keen to hear what you think. And I am now be keen to leave you to the rest of your day. Enjoy yourself. And I hope you enjoyed yourself here as well.